For a long time, I always had one path in life, to be an entertainer, and I was pretty dead set on it. Whether it took forms in singing, or acting, Problems the way you look at him. Hi, or being a host, thank you so, so much for joining us and interviewing here on the JM YouTube channel. I was always set on entertaining in some sort of capacity. Of course, that later evolved into YouTube and other avenues like social media, but that concept was always alive in my head. But I guess as I grew up, different versions of success came with me. I found ways to evolve success and stability to be geared away from entertaining and more towards business and travel. I think that introducing these new ideas into my life were amazing, and I love being able to diversify my talents and opportunities. With that being said though, it's also kind of only made things worse. I realized I wanted to do everything, and I still do, and will, as long as I'm alive. But I also want to have some concrete missions that I can look back at, manifest, and check off. So, so I decided to make a vision board. The reason for this may be a little bit odd, and I know there are probably more effective and less time consuming ways to do this, but I've learned over time that I'm a bit of a visual learner. I'm a person who thinks very logically and honestly a bit too realistically so my optimism gets skewed in some aspects of my life. And I've learned over time that the only way to get that back is to allow things that I thought were a little bit ineffective into my life in different ways. One being a vision board. For a long time I believed vision boards were completely ineffective honestly a whole bunch of bull and just made for aesthetic purposes and even when i'm making my vision board today you'll see that it's not really an aesthetically pleasing vision board more a middle ground for me being creative in a sense and creating that visual presence but also uh, being me because realistically i am not the most aesthetically pleasing individual to ever be created but i do like my background it looks kind of cute you know, it's really interesting because I've actually talked about this on a TikTok video before. Growing up rave or religious, you weren't supposed to speak something into existence before it happened yet because essentially it went against God's plan or God's will and you were kind of just supposed to let things happen the way they're supposed to happen. And that's the way I grew up. So I think for a long time I was just scared to manifest things because I didn't want to push God's will out of my way. But I think in 2021 I completely changed that mentality for myself. I realized that for myself I want to be able to adapt in ways that I see best fit for me and the best way that I've realized is most effective for me this year is doing self-love and manifestation techniques which kind of transitions into this vision board what I see for this vision board is something a little bit more practical like I said before but definitely putting a creative spin on my goals I was always a person who lived in the present and I think that was shown in the amount of times I've hopped between things I wanted to do and how many times I've quit YouTube because it's been a lot. So I definitely want to create concrete goals for myself that I can do with this vision board, if that makes sense, if I'm explaining that correctly. So let's get into how I'm going to be designing the vision board. So the vision board is going to be split into two. Right now, it's a huge bulletin board. It's really big unopened and really big. I have a candle lit so I don't want to burn myself or this house down. One is going to be my 2021 goals and the other one is going to be my long-term goals. Goals that I see for myself within the next five to ten years. And within each goal I'm going to split it up into three different types of categories. The first one being personal, second is philanthropy, and third is business. So splitting up into those three groups feels very cohesive and I'm the type of person where it's either it's extremely organized or not organized at all. So I have to organize this mood board to make sense to me or this vision board to make sense to me because if it does not, then I am not going to be able to understand what I put on that vision board. So without further ado, further ado, further ado, ado, isn't that a language? Without further ado, yes, without further ado, let us start this vision board experience. So here are the things I want to accomplish in 2021. We're going to start off with the personal section first and work our way to the others. The first thing I want personally to do in 2021 is be 50% fluent in Thai. Thai is on the list of level three out of four of the hardest languages to learn in the world. And it is not a popular language. It's only spoken by 70 million people, which is 1% of the population. So imagine learning a language for 1% of the population. Imagine finding resources for that. So I don't expect myself to be even farther than 50%. I don't even expect myself to be 50%, but that is a hope. I am a very committed person sometimes. So I feel like I, I wanna learn it so bad, but I have so many books that I'm using to learn Thai. The second one, kind of relating, is I wanna visit at least two countries this year 
and one of them has to be Thailand. I have never flown out of the country before. I didn't even have a passport until a month and a half ago. So I really want to take 2021 when this pandemic is settled and everyone has gotten their shots and it's mandatory to travel if you've gotten the shots. That's when I'll feel more comfortable traveling. But yes, I am so, so, so hoping that I can get to Thailand and visit another country, maybe my home country like Puerto Rico. I really, really want to visit the Philippines, Korea, Japan. I want to visit a lot of Asian countries. So I'm hoping maybe I can do like a little Asian excursion, but let's hope that uh, everything is settled and I definitely, definitely, definitely don't want to do any unsafe traveling. So that goal is definitely has a little asterisk on it because I don't want to push anything a little too far uh, when it comes to my safety and the safety of others. But that is a goal I have for 2021. So my third goal is to read 100 books. And to some that might sound a lot, to some that might sound normal, to some that might sound very little, honestly, because there's people who read one book a day. But if you really, really think about it, that's 3.65 days per book. And I usually read and finish a book around 400 pages in about a day to a day and a half so i feel like i can really get to that goal maybe even past 100 books so i want to continue that journey and continue reading i've implemented it into my night routine pretty consistently so i really really hope to get to a goal where i can read 100 books in a year by the end of 2021 another personal goal and honestly a goal that i've wanted for so long is to hit 1000 subscribers on youtube now i've been on youtube for seven years years and even though I was very unsuccessful and was never consistent on YouTube maybe in the first two years I started I now realize that because I want to take it seriously and because I've taken steps to become a better youtuber I really really want to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this year I think that that goal is really attainable for me and I think that because of my passion and my drive that is gonna be possible I am definitely manifesting that and I really really hope that I can get to that and number five and something that is also really important to me is to get to my end of year weight goal I've been working on self-love and honestly I've been loving my body so much more than I ever have before but I definitely still hold fear for my health and and resentment for myself for not being committed and passionate about my weight loss journey. So I definitely, definitely, definitely want to get to my weight loss goal by the end of this year. Okay, so let's get into my 2021 philanthropic goals. So this one's not gonna sound philanthropic, but I promise you it really is. So I guess it's a little bit of business and philanthropic, but more philanthropic than anything else. I want to produce and write four to five songs this year. And that might sound like it makes absolutely no sense to many, many of you, but something that's honestly even more important to me than TV and film is music. Uh, I think that a lot of people can resonate with that, but music has saved my life in so, so, so many ways. I'm hoping that I can produce songs and give 100% of net proceeds to multiple charities and charities that help it's aspiring musicians, you know, provide resources for them as well. I I'm not sure how it's gonna happen or when it will happen, but I definitely know I can write four to five songs. And the second goal for 2021 is to volunteer in a minority-centered org by the end of this year, because it's something that I'm really passionate about and I think that the best way to do that is attacking the problem from the root of the issue. And I wanna find an organization that's helping towards that because 20 voices is always better than one. Not that one voice isn't important, but it's better to build a foundation of, of voices uh, and use those collection of voices to make a movement. So I'm hoping I can find an organization that can do just that for me. And now on to my business goals for 2021. My first one is to finish my first draft of my book. So I started writing a book during my spring break and nobody knows what it's about. I barely know what it's about, but I have started writing the plot and you know, some characters and their arcs with it. I, like I said, I'm an active reader and I'm an active TV watcher and I love watching shows that are adapted from novels. So I'm working towards finishing up my book by the end of this year, uh, the first draft, and hopefully talking with a publisher or, or an editor or something to get that out and possible in 2022, maybe the end of 2022 or the beginning of 2023. My second business goal is to have five streams of income. Right now, I only have three, and I'm hoping to add two more streams of income, one being article writing, and I'm trying to look for a fifth stream of income, a little bit of a secret one, but I'm hoping that I can, I can start that up and make that happen by the end of 2021. And my last goal, that doesn't feel like a business goal, but it is because that's how I view it, to get a 3.8 GPA for the following semesters for this year. So this upcoming spring and this upcoming fall semester. I wanna get a 3.8 GPA, and the reason I see that as business is because with the 3.8 GPA means that I am going to be able to get into a better grad school, and also means I'm going to be able to get a job of a higher caliber or possibly get a 
better level entry job just because of my school status which is sad and there's obviously a patriarchy and a hierarchy system in this school in this country but it is a reality so I view it as a business asset because better GPA better path down the line all right now we're gonna get into the long-term goals my first personal long-term goal is to move to Thailand for a period of my life. I honestly, America scares me. And honestly, I'm just tired of living here. Like I said, I have a love for Thailand, a really deep love for Thailand. In Thailand, I want to immerse myself in a completely different and difficult experience because that's the type of person I am. I don't live with what ifs because so now that it's already in my head, it's going to happen. One way or another, to Dios quiere, it's going to happen. The second one is to become an actor or performer. So kind of contradictory to what I just said, my goal has always been to be an entertainer. Ooh, that had a little bit of flow. So I'm really working towards creating that path for me. I've been wanting to be an actor since I was three years old. That has never died. My third one is to publish a book. So basically publish the book of the first draft that I want to finish by the end of the year. Uh, one of my favorite books is called What If It's Us. It's written by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. So I want to write a book that's definitely more oriented towards that environment and that kind of pacing. I really, really like that book. Number four, pretty quick. I want to become a polyglot. It's good to know multiple languages and it's cool. <laughs> and my last goal is just to be mentally healthy. I put this on my lifelong goal because there's always going to be a mission for my mental health. The birds are chirping. Do you guys hear birds chirping? It is 2.22 in the morning. What the heck? I just, that's a lifelong goal for mine to just have a strong mental health system in place and just have some mental stability because I lack that a little more than any human should. And by the way, I've been saying lifelong, I mean long-term goals, not lifelong goals. So my first one is cum laude. Kind of the same reason, like I said before with the GPA, being cum laude would be a great reward to have and, you know, get me into a better school, which will get me a career. And, and if I choose to go down that path. Number two is to open my first publishing house. And this actually goes into both philanthropy and business because at the end of the day yes me opening a publishing house is a business venture it is something I want to do and it will hopefully be successful make me money but I also always plan to donate 20 to 30 percent of my of any earnings from the publishing house to charities and also donate a certain number of goal of books every year because I really find it important for children to read and implementing reading systems. I also want to do tours, like reading tours and just, you know, introduce reading to students who might feel like it's a little bit boring or more disconnected and how you could create a story with any book you choose uh, that is fitting for your personality. But I really want the editing house, the publishing house to orient around the underrepresented and minority groups most specifically. They're gonna have priority because those are the groups that stay close to my heart and I'll always be fighting for it. And I also have publishing a book under business. Hopefully I publish a book and it makes money and successful, so that is another business venture. So now the last section of the long-term goals is my philanthropic goals. I wanna donate 20 to 30% of my total income of every year to charities and organizations. So if I make a million dollars a year, I wanna donate at least 200 to $300,000 to charities and organizations, local shelters, GoFundMes, and you know, create a lot of like job opportunities for people in third world countries. Instead of bringing a whole group of 20 white kids to build a school, I will give resources and money to workers in those countries and provide jobs for them. So that's a goal I really, really want to do. The third goal is, uh, it's not really philanthropic, I guess. Like, like I, I didn't know where to put this. I guess it's more of a selfish philanthropic, but I wanna buy my mom a house. It felt weird putting in philanthropic because it's like, to me, it's a mission to take care of your family. It's not like an option. Um, I know for some people it's an option and, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that that's not reasonable. It's not understanding it completely is. But for me, I was very blessed to have uh, uh, an amazing mom. So for me, it's not really an option to take care of her. It's just kind of not an obligation, I guess a happy choice or, or a happy obligation in a sense. So like where I want to oblige that obligation, if you know what I mean. This fourth one is feels like it would be lifelong because it's a very, very, aggressive and intensive uh, philanthropic adventure or excursion or journey or whatever you want to call it. I want to build a series of low income housing buildings that are well run and well managed, uh, specifically in impoverished neighborhoods. This might seem like a business venture to some, but idealistically, I would want it to be that I get zero profit from it. Honestly, I gain a loss from it. I don't know how that's going to work and there's just so much more in the works for that and it's years to build a building to, you know, to get tenants in there and just to find the proper resources and make sure they're always okay but I, I I don't plan to make any profits I plan for them to pay like whatever rent they do pay just 
it kind of pay the building pays itself and I earn zero profit because I genuinely just I, 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 I hate the housing system especially here in New York City especially for low incomes especially project housing and you know all of the, the housing systems here they just uh, kind of force you to live in poverty all your life or push you to make the slightest change and leave that poverty system but also lose all your benefits and I hate that option so I want one that's hopefully not run by the city but if that's necessary to get people who can use like section 8 housing and things like that then okay but I definitely just want to build sustainable housing and living for people who are low income and my last one and this one I've had as a goal since I was 13 years old and I hope God please I hope I can make this happen. I want to create a college scholarship for students, specifically for students in minority locations that have under a 3.0 GPA. Most college scholarships while you're in high school cut off at 3.0. Some of them go down to 2.8 if you are able to appeal or beg. There are very few that happen with very low GPAs or require no GPA minimum. but. I want to create those re that resource because I just know that a lot of student circumstances are so difficult and I don't think just because they don't have a 3.0 they don't deserve to get funding and that is such a common situation in a lot of scholarships and I'm hoping that I can create that scholarship fund for students to at least get $5,000 to entry into college maybe paying $2,500 per semester for their first year just to have that transitional period and hopefully growing from there making it a four-year program and hopefully being as rich as Bill Gates one day so I can just give away everything because I don't know what that man does with his money. He doesn't even need it anymore. I really hope that this video was beneficial for some of you. I know that it may seem odd, it honestly might seem like it doesn't matter, but I feel like creating a vision board or something like a vision board, and a vision board in your own way or your own right, allows you to bring in positive ideologies and positive systems into your life. Uh, creating a vision board is the most harmless thing you can do. If you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, and you know, follow my social media links, you can subscribe, but more than anything, please stay safe. This world is really dangerous and scary right now. Please get vaccinated. I mean, don't be a dick, but more than anything, take care of your mental health. That's the most important thing. But that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Guys, gals, and I'm right your pals. <laughs> Bye.